It is likely that SSP structures will be built in factories here on Earth and then transported into space. To accomplish this ambitious task, NASA and industry are developing reusable launch vehicles, known as RLVs, that could carry large payloads into space cheaply and reliably. Once launched into a low Earth orbit by an RLV, the many elements of an SSP system must be moved from there on up into a geostationary Earth orbit. Achieving this affordably will require advances well beyond today's propulsion systems. Highly efficient electric propulsion, also being developed by NASA and its team, would do the job. Because geostationary Earth orbit, also known as GEO, is about 22,000 miles higher than the orbit of the International Space Station, moving SSP system elements to their final destination poses a significant challenge. This next video segment you'll see demonstrates NASA's reusable launch vehicle technology and how it works. A second video segment will then illustrate the electric propulsion technologies that could be used to transport the elements of an SSP system in space. The delivery needs of large-scale space solar power will help create the demand for tomorrow's space transportation. Modular and robust packaging of space solar power elements will allow space cargo to be handled in bulk. Highly advanced space transportation vehicles launched from high-throughput spaceports will allow very low-cost delivery of the materials and components needed to provide energy from space. Advanced methods, such as the maglev ground launch assist concept, may emerge and transform today's launch complexes into multimodal gateways to the space frontier. To effectively collect energy from the sun, the space solar power platform must be placed into the geosynchronous orbit, or GEO. However, GEO is located 22,300 miles above the Earth's surface. This is approximately 22,000 miles beyond the International Space Station. Therefore, a tremendous amount of propulsion is required for this task. To transport the power generating station to GEO, heavy lift launch vehicles would deliver the payload to LEO, or low Earth orbit approximately 200 to 300 miles above the Earth's surface. From there, the spacecraft would deploy itself, and the propulsion systems would then transport it to its operating position. NASA has developed two electrical propulsion systems to accomplish this task, the Hall Thruster and the high-powered MPD, or Magnetoplasma Dynamic Thruster. For space solar power, we're looking for a very fuel-efficient uh, electric a propulsion system compared to chemical propulsion systems which basically use uh, a chemical reaction to provide the energy and therefore the thrust of the engine we are looking to use electrical power to provide the energy for the thrust uh, there's two ways to do that, that we're, we're choosing for the space solar power system one is the hall thruster which basically uses electrical energy to provide a high energy electrical field which accelerates a gas to very high speeds ten times the speed of a chemical rocket um, for the other choice we're looking at to have another choice, is the uh, MPD thruster. In this case, we take a magnetic field, a very high energy magnetic field, and accelerate a gas in that way. So we basically have two ways to take electrical energy and turn it into a very high, very high fuel efficient thrust. While the Hall thruster is very fuel efficient at kilowatt power levels, the MPD thruster provides better thrust density and performance at megawatt power levels. High powered cathodes used to carry electric current are integral components of both the Hall and MPD thruster. Developed by NASA, the Hall thruster cathode works much like a spark plug in a car, initiating a charge that will help accelerate the thruster. However, NASA's propulsion technologies have applications that go well beyond space solar power. The really exciting thing is this technology will be good not only for space solar power but for other uses. Uh, for, for example, it will uh, allow us to put more TV satellites up into orbit. Uh, the best thing it could probably do is help people explore the universe, uh, send people to Mars, uh, even send people out to uh, Jupiter or other places. Um, this propulsion system is so fuel efficient that it allows us to do that in a very affordable way. The on-orbit assembly and maintenance of space solar power satellites 
is a challenge to future space transportation systems. The number and frequency of space solar power satellite launches will provide the economies of scale that will help drive down the cost of space transportation.